Hi, I'm Laura from Meadowlark Violin, and welcome to my Song of the Month tutorial. You can get the free sheet music for this song at my website, meadowlarkviolin.com, and the link is below in the description. I also encourage you to check out my website for lots of great free violin resources and a lot more free sheet music. And also sign up for my newsletter while you're there. That way you can get this Song of the Month tutorial sent to your inbox every month. If you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a like. That really helps me out. Now on to our song of the month, which is Ara Lee. All right, so first we're gonna start off with a warm-up scale. And this song is in the key of G major. So we're gonna be doing a G major scale. And one of the hard parts about this song is that it's slow. And if you've been playing violin for any amount of time, you probably know that the slower songs are actually just as challenging, if not more challenging, than fast songs because you have to try to get a beautiful tone on those long notes with your bow, which is challenging. So in this warm-up, you're going to be doing two slurred quarter notes followed by a whole note. And here's what you want to think about when you're playing these long whole notes. You want to use your whole bow for that whole note. If you start that whole note on a down bow right here in the middle, you've only got half of your bow to try to have a good solid tone for that long note. So if you're starting a whole note on a down bow, you want to start it as low to the frog as you can. So what you have to do is think about the note that comes before the long note. That's the note or the slur that's going to help you get to where you need to be in the bow. So for the up bow slur, right before that long down bow, you want to get as close to the frog as you can. And then the opposite is true when you have a long up bow. On the down bow, before the long up bow, you want to get as close to the tip as you can. Now before we start, there's going to be a count in. A voice will say one, two, three, four, and then we'll start playing. I like to have my bow on the string by about the second beat of the count in. And then by the fourth beat, what I want you to do is take a breath in on that fourth beat of the count in. And then on the first note of the scale, just exhale as you make that down bow. And that helps you have a really smooth, relaxed start. So we're going to do that for the warm up and then later on when we do it in the actual song. All right, let's play the scale warm up together. through some tips and tricks to help you play Ara Lee. First off, when you're starting, you don't have to start way at the frog. I recommend starting kind of lower half. And of course, taking a breath in and then exhaling as you make that first down bow like this. That's gonna help you get a really nice, smooth, clean start. And I recommend practicing that a lot, just doing that first note over and over again. Now look at measure two. You've got a couple different options for what fingerings you can use for this measure. You can either do open A, E, open A. That's totally fine. You can do fourth finger A there if you want. Uh, that way you don't have to do the string crossing. 
Or if you want to shift up to third position, if you're learning third position, you can do that as well. So if you're doing the third position finger pattern, all you're doing is shifting up, second finger on A, on the D string, third finger E on the G string, back to second finger A, and then back down to first position for the next measure. So it would sound like this. But you can try any of those finger patterns, and I use different ones, so you can decide which one's best for you. Now let's move on and take a look at measure seven and eight. So you notice in measure eight, you've got a long whole note, and it's on a down bow. So you want to think about the bowing that comes before that, that up bow slur. Use that up bow slur to get as close to the frog as you can. So like this, here's measure seven. Another thing to think about with these whole notes, especially when you're doing them close to the frog, is to keep your bow speed moving. A lot of times students try to kind of slow their bow speed down as they're doing that uh, bow change, but keep the bow speed moving and kind of lead with your elbow to get a nice smooth string crossing. Moving on, let's look at measure 9 and 10. You notice this is the exact same notes that measure 9 is repeated in measure 10. And anytime you have this in music, a, a repeated idea, you don't want to play it the exact same the second time, because that's kind of boring. You want to do something a little different. So for this one, I like making the second measure, measure 10, kind of like an echo. I like making it softer. And that sets me up really well for this crescendo we're going to do later on in this line. Now another part about 9 and 10, it seems kind of boring for us, we're just playing Bs. But this is actually my favorite part in the song because the chord progression is really lovely. So listen for that as you're playing along. It's really the chords that are almost more important than the melody. Now look at measure 11 and 12. And here again in measure 12, you've got a whole note. This one's gonna be on an up bow. So you wanna think about the note before that. So that quarter note down bow on the A, you wanna get as far to the tip as you can. And now generally when I'm playing, I like to do whole bows on down bows if I can, because it's a lot easier to kind of control that long bow up here in the tip. Now the only reason I would switch that and do a whole bow on an up bow is if I want to do a crescendo. And going from the tip to the frog, that really helps me with a crescendo because I can use a lot of weight here in the lower half of the bow. And that's what we're going to do in measure 11 and 12. So 11 starts on an up bow. So you see as you move towards the frog, you can speed up your bow, use a little bit more weight. So that means starting that up bow, kind of slower bow speed than normal so that you've got more room to do that crescendo down in the lower part of the bow. And moving on, measure 14, this is one place where I do do the open A. Um, I don't shift or do fourth finger since you're coming from a B in measure 13. So that's fine to do an open A there. And then measure 15 here again, you want to go all the way to the frog for that up bow before the whole note at the end. Now we're also going to repeat this song. We're going to play it twice. And if you notice, it ends on a down bow and it starts on a down bow. So we're going to have to kind of play around with the bowings so that the bowings are the same the second time. And here's what I want you to do. When you repeat the song, I want you to slur those first two quarter notes together in one up bow. And that's gonna get you on the right track so that all the other bowings match. All right, so let's try playing the song together with our guitar backing track. Thank you. 
enjoyed that video lesson and those play along tracks. Let me know in the comments below what other songs you would like for me to do for the song of the month. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and like this video. And while you're here, you can check out this video or maybe this video for some other great violin tips. I'm Laura from Meadowlock Violin. Happy practicing.